Welcome to Friday Takeaway. This week I look at two very different tech companies, Exeata and Inari Emetron. But we start with US President Donald Trump, whose blacklist of Chinese telco giants Huawei has sent shockwaves through the entire supply chain of the global semiconductor industry, sparking a global sell-off of some of the biggest names. The Philadelphia Semiconductor Index has fallen 15% in a month, reflecting these concerns. Though there was some relief from a 90-day reprieve on the export ban that was supposed to have started on 20th of May. Currently, Huawei relies on parts and software from American companies like Qualcomm and Google to build and market the 200 million mobile phones it ships annually. In Indonesia, at least six people have died in riots following an election that saw President Joko Widodo retaining his presidency for a second term. He won 55.5% of the national votes and these riots have come after Jokowi's main challenger, Prabowo Subianto, alleged election irregularities and has vowed to reject the official results. Prabowo has also claimed a victory repeatedly while supporters have called for public rallies to protest the official results because in Indonesia, a candidate can challenge the results in the nation's constitutional court within three days before the commission confirms the winner. The MCMC this week released their guidelines on M&As in the telco industry, no doubt in response to the planned merger between Exeata and Telenor, which has raised, of course, various antitrust concerns, including a Salcom DG monopoly in Malaysia and the possible risks of foreign uh, majority-owned entity controlling the local market. MCMC says the deal won't get the green light without a thorough review and will consider factors including the degree of market concentration, barriers to entry, the level of dynamic competition, the merger's effect on the relevant firm's ability to raise prices, the degree of countervailing buyer power, and the existence and degree of any efficiencies brought about by this merger. In this week's This or That, I take a look at two companies who sit at different parts of the IT ecosystem. Exeta Group Bahad, a regional telco player which is exploring the merger with Telenor in the region, and Inari Emetron, one of the largest publicly traded semiconductor companies in Malaysia. Globally, tech stocks are undergoing a bit of a rough patch, so who weathers it better? Let's find out more. Exeata is one of the largest telco groups in ASEAN and South Asia. Via names like Smart, Exel Exeata, Cellcom, Robi, Encel and Dialog, they've got 150 million customers contributing about 24 billion ringgit in revenue. They operate in nine countries in the region like Malaysia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Thailand, Myanmar and Cambodia. Earlier this month, Exeta and Telenor of Norway announced plans to combine their Asian operations, which if completed would double Exeta's revenues and its customer base. This merger would also rank the business as the largest operator by revenue in both ASEAN and South Asia and also include both Exeta's and Telenor's tower assets. That business would have a portfolio of between 50 and 60,000 towers that could be spun off separately. And they would also have a regional innovation center with an annual 100 million ringgit investment focusing on digital capabilities. This merger is still far from being a done deal. Exeta and Telenor are undergoing due diligence right now and they've got a three-month grace period to sign a binding agreement beyond which regulatory hurdles remain and that could take a further six to nine months. Earlier this week, MCMC released a set of guidelines for telco m as in response, so clearly to this deal, where it said that while it appreciated the creation of shareholder value wherever possible, MCMC also wants a fair and open playing field, since a Cellcom Digi merger in Malaysia also means a combined market share of as much as 60% of the local market. 26 analysts cover Exeter according to Bursa Marketplace, with a median target price of 4 ringgit 53 cents. 3 are a strong buy, 10 are a buy, 13 are a hold, none are a reduce, and none are a sell. But because their shares have rallied on the merger plans between its unit Cellcom and Digi, only a potential 3% gain lies in store. Inari is one of the largest outsourced semiconductor assembly and test providers, known as OSAT, in Malaysia. They offer niche services in radio frequency system for smartphones, fiber optic transceivers and other electronics manufacturing services. Around half its revenue comes from the radio frequency division, which mainly serves the smartphone market, including Apple's iPhones. Analysts have downgraded the entire local semiconductor sector after the escalation trade tensions between the US and China over the weekend. 
As we know, the US government has blacklisted Huawei for alleged security and privacy breaches, which has sent shockwaves through the entire global semiconductor sector. This move effectively barred Huawei from buying parts and components from US companies without first getting US government approval. So far, Google has suspended business with Huawei, while Broadcom and Intel have reportedly told employees that it will not sell to the Chinese firm until further notice. By and large, the concerns are seen as short-term in nature. However, analysts are still waiting to talk to management of local semicon companies later this month when earnings are announced to get a clearer view of how bad or not the situation really is. There's also a sense that it might not be entirely negative because the fall in demand for Huawei smartphones could be offset by consumers switching to non-Chinese brands like Samsung and Apple, even though Apple itself could be boycotted in China. Plus, semiconductor players outside of China are potential beneficiaries of any plans by manufacturers hit by the trade spread to reroute orders or to readjust supply chains, even though the impact may not be immediate and clear cut, especially with the prospect of a full-blown trade war still present. 18 analysts cover NRE according to Bursa Marketplace, and they've got a consensus target price of one ringgit seventy-one cents. Four are a strong buy, five are a buy, seven are a hold, two are a reduce, and none are a sell. And based on what's currently trading at, that means a potential twenty-three percent gain in stock.